everyone hear me? Can you see me? <laughs> Hi. Hi, babe. Hi, you thank you. Me? Yes, I can hear you perfectly. Can you hear me loud and yes. clear? Hi, thank you so much for agreeing to do this Hi. with me. Always, babe. Anytime. Yeah, so you're supposed to be my second guest, but because of um, what happened last night, you're now my first guest. So Yay! welcome to <laughs> to mommy time. It's all about us mummies tonight. Yeah, I know. How are you, by the way? I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm doing mm -hmm. so far so good. You know, just taking it day by day as it comes. Yeah. Um, yeah, just taking it day by day as it comes and just mm -hmm. trying. Try yeah, to I know. The little things, you know? Yeah. Yeah, all of us are definitely. I mean, just a little backstory for everybody of how I got to know you. Okay. Um, I got to know you, of course, through your twin sister, Tanuja. That's right. And I have to admit that initially when I when I first met the both of you, you guys are of course identical twins. I couldn't tell you apart when you're not together. Like when I meet you separately, I couldn't tell you guys apart. But now that you have like chopped off your locks. I know. This gives it away now every time. I I know, <laughs> right? So for those who don't know, did you make that decision to cut off all of your hair because you want people to be able to tell you apart? Or is it just a mom thing? You know how moms after giving birth, they tend to like want to get rid of their long hair, which I completely understand now because I'm losing massive amounts of hair. Oh, are you now? No, I think it wasn't yeah. It wasn't that I wanted to to just, you know, cut off my hair. That actually, it wasn't a motherhood decision thingy at all. Mm -hmm. I just felt that um, I wanted a change and my husband, you know, Vijay was always saying, why don't you cut your hair short over the years? Yeah. But mm -hmm. I never really had the guts to, you know, actually go chop it all off. Um, yeah. I don't know, probably motherhood made me more daring, I'd like to think. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, one day I just decided to go and chop it all off. <laughs> <laughs> and it looks great, by the way. You look amazing. Yeah, I'm growing and it out now. So it's at that weird stage, but I'm growing yeah. it out right now. How how yeah. long is it gonna stay short for, or are you really planning to grow it out already? No, it's already growing out, and it grows mm -hmm. actually pretty fast. So. I know you guys have a lot of hair. I'm so jealous. You have a lot of hair too. <laughs> You've got uh, so that's big because hair. because I'm putting you know I parked it all to one side, covering <laughs> my bald spots. That's why. But anyways, yeah. Speaking of your husband VJ, I mean you more than anyone would know how important it is to stay home, right? Because mm. I know I'm very lucky to have my partner, my husband, John, at home with me. But VJ is a doctor, one of the yeah. frontliners, who is actually treating the COVID patients. Mm. And I know you'll definitely be able to relate to a lot of women out there, or a lot of moms or, you know, just wives or husbands whose partners have to work at a time like this. So how how are you coping without your your other half? Yeah, like I was saying, you know, babe, um, it's tough. It's worrying because mm -hmm. you know goes in every day, you know, um, being exposed. But um, yeah, I just gotta keep faith, and you know, I just gotta, you know, he he he's much needed now by the nation. His expertise. Um, yeah, I just definitely. gotta support him all the way and make sure things at home still run, um, which is yeah. what I try do every day they are tough days they are tough days um mm -hmm. but it's thing that um like i said just try to appreciate the little things in life and um just keep faith yeah and that's what i love about you you're so positive Aww, and you. you know and and i have to say this that like, we are really really grateful for all the frontliners, yes, even the essential are. workers, and everyone who has to work at a time like this. Exactly. We're lucky enough to be able to stay at home. Yeah. So for those of you who and don't have to work, who's, who's, yeah. who's partners, or even if you are a frontliner, thank you mm -hmm. so much. Yeah. yeah, thank you. We're, we're so, so grateful. So for those of us who get to stay at home, please do our part to keep staying at home. Yeah, please Because I remember... Home. Yeah, because I remember seeing VJ's post one day on Facebook when he took a picture of the amount of cars outside at about 10-ish p.m. That was alarming. But thankfully, now that we're in our, what, third week, going to the fourth week yeah. of MCO, that I think everyone sort of, like, got into the motion of things. And, um, and because the enforcement is uh, 
like it's more strict are, right now. Yeah. There's two people so, out there. People are still not listening, according to Vijay. <laughs> but yeah. Oh, no. So yeah, if you guys are watching this, if you know of anyone who is still out there roaming about for no reason, please. You can report them, okay? <laughs> You yeah, exactly. Get them to stay home. So anyway, yeah. so you are just juggling day to day with Darian, your son. Quick fun fact for you guys. Darian and my son, Miles, are exactly two months apart. Yes. Miles was born on third both, gen. Both born on the third of Yeah, March exactly. And was it gen? Yes. Yes, third gen. So they are 2018 babies, which makes yes. them two plus years old now. How is he driving you insane yet? <laughs> yes, he is. Oh my god, he's driving me insane. Toddler tantrums, you know, terrible mm-hmm. twos, probably going on 320. I don't know. But... <laughs> Two turning 20. That's yeah, because they start developing a mind of their own. They want to do things on their yeah. own. For example, like mm-hmm. when you wake up in the morning, you know, you're supposed to brush your teeth, but today it's like, I don't want. Exactly. You know? They They know what they want and what they don't yeah. want. And yeah. what they like and what they don't like. Exactly. Yeah. It's, these are fun times. They can express themselves and they know exactly how they feel and they just act upon it. So I guess it's yeah. just, yeah, up to us to help them navigate through these times. And, exactly. Um, just, just, just go with the flow, babe. That's what I say. Let them do what they want because you don't want yeah. them to get tantrum throws. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So what, do you, what are you doing to keep sane? Every day, what you keep saying, yeah. uh, my me time is when he goes to bed, you know, it's like now uh, in the morning when he's yeah, it's usually now or in the mornings before he wakes up when I'm you know doing my yoga, mm-hmm. you know. But I try and wake up before he wakes up, so he's up usually by eight eight thirty, um, yeah, sometimes even nine. So I'm up usually an hour or so before that, you know, just yeah. on my mat, you know, doing my thing, just that mm-hmm. quiet, you know. There's, there's before no chaos like, I, yeah I'm like, <laughs> wow, I miss this time so yeah that's what I try and do um, I think it's so important that we try and fill our cups first you know yeah. before we can you know give back to our babies that's so so important take care of ourselves first mm-hmm. yeah. that's a really really good tip take care yeah. of yourself and I think the whole tagline that we're going to run along with for mommy time it's just to be kind to yourself and I think that is such a good tip to if you can I mean I don't know how early your babies or your kids wake up but just that extra time before they get up in the morning if you can just you know do your thing I'm pretty sure for you it's yoga meditation I started doing that too during the MCO and I think it makes a huge difference it does, it does, you know, it, it yeah. does, definitely just, you know, just breathing, um, mm-hmm. but you don't even have to just, just move, you know, vigorously, yeah. but I think now more exactly. than ever, what's so important is that yeah. we take time and just breathe it all out, because it's all these embodied fears in our body, you know, and mm-hmm. we need to get these embodied patterns out, and I think what's so important is to just take time and just go back to breath. Oh, I'm I'm so doing that tomorrow. I've actually watched your video with your breathing techniques. Thank you. And yeah, because I don't know, I haven't even left the house. I don't even do grocery runs. Same, same um, yeah. Same here. Yeah. And I'm feeling so anxious. Like I feel like there's this whole anxiety building up within me of the thought of even just receiving packages from outside. I'm just like, oh, oh. Do we spray it down? And when mm. I touch it, I, I better not touch my face or wash my hands. Wash I'm pretty hands. sure you... Yeah, you want the yeah. Babies them. yeah. Exactly. So there's just so much like uncertainty and anxiety and stress right now that the breathing really helps. So you guys, if you want to try it out, just follow Anuja. She gives a lot of tips when it comes to like movement and breathing techniques. So, Hi. you know, if it's something that you guys Hi, are Judy. into. Yeah. Hi, <laughs> Hi, everybody. So, yes, if you do have questions for us, please leave them in the comment section. We'll be more than happy to answer them. And also, I actually teased about this that... Um, towards the end of the session there is a special giveaway i'm not going to announce what it is just yet so you guys have to stick yeah stick around to find out um but yes the topic for today as i put up in the poster 
is about breastfeeding because um, mm-hmm. I've been getting a lot of questions when when it comes to breastfeeding. Uh, okay. And I know that you fully breastfed Darian as well, right? Yes, I did. Yeah, I breastfed yeah, and- you. For, for a year. I think 13 for months a, to be exact. 13 months. How, how was it? Did you face any kind of challenges when you were fully breastfeeding him? For me, I think I was pretty lucky, babe. Um, Darren mm-hmm. was a good latcher from day one. Yeah. You know, nurses mm-hmm. were like, wow, you know, he's, he, he latches on so well. And thank God my breastfeeding journey was, was good with him. I actually enjoyed my breastfeeding journey. Um, and it was great bonding for us. I did have my challenges. What would my challenges be? Hmm. Uh, I had a clogged duct once, you know, okay. throughout my breastfeeding journey. I had a clogged duct. Thank God I didn't go to mastitis. Um, mm-hmm. It would burn when he would feed, especially after mm. he would latch off, right? So it, it was there for some time. It, it was like this pus, like right on my nipple. And um, okay. I just noticed it, it there. But when it started hurting, you know, I was like, hmm, yeah. maybe I should do something about it. And I consulted, obviously, my husband. And he was like, yeah, maybe you should go see a doctor. And I actually went mm-hmm. to see a breast specialist. And he was like, yeah, you yeah. just can just remove it. He just put a needle through, pull, pulled out the little pus that it was. And I was fine after that. Uh, but I yeah. just want to tell moms out there, if you're having anything like a clock duct, duct what they usually say is that the baby suction when when they actually breastfeed you it should be able to to release it but it didn't happen with me so um, i had to go to a breast specialist i still remember that was that one time that i had um that issue but other than that it was it was a wonderful journey for for darian and i it get it got so good to hear yeah, yeah, it was, babe. I enjoyed it. I miss it now. I miss it now. Yeah, I remember you saying this, yeah. that you actually, you were um, kind of putting off weaning him off because you would miss that that bond that you had with yeah. him, right? And just yeah. a disclaimer for everyone watching right now as well, we're just sharing um, based on our experiences. <laughs> so Bro, it may I, work, it I may not work that. for... <laughs> babe, yeah, we have trolls <laughs> watching us right now. I know. <laughs> He had roast duck. We are good to know. Can you just like send some over? Anyways, okay, yeah. So we are. Yes, yeah. yeah, so we we are sharing based on based on our experience. So it's always best to check with your doctor or your lactation nurse to see yeah. what works for you, right? Yes, yeah, exactly. Because um, oh. I thankfully I had a pretty smooth sailing journey as well. I breastfed yes, mouse for yeah for fourteen months. And um, throughout the 14 months, yeah, he was, he was pretty good at latching as well. And I really listened to my lactation nurse. So, you know, all the techniques that she taught me um, yeah. prior to breastfeeding, um, how to massage your boob and, you know, um, to just, you know, stay calm and constantly moisturize it with, you know, creams or your own uh, milk. To make sure, make sure that you don't, it doesn't get dry and everything, yeah. right? Yes. So, I yes. mean, I do remember feeling, um, having a few challenges myself as well, like the whole engorgement issue where, mm. you know, it was just so painful. And I didn't even know what it was at that time um, because it, the pain would just go all the way to the back as well. Wow. So, yeah, because yeah, because apparently, I'm, yeah, at the back, it comes the from back. the back, yeah. right? So, yeah, and... Um, and yeah, so I I went to see a breastfeeding specialist as well. And the advice was just, yeah, to just keep latching, like you said earlier as well. Because yeah. somehow the baby just knows how to, yeah, and then do the whole cold compress thing and stuff like that. So that really helped me as well. But I can only imagine what some moms might go, have gone through, the ones who, you know, had trouble breastfeeding. Because there were times when, you know, just, you know, it's, occasionally you'd get the baby being so frustrated mm-hmm. or and or at one point mouse was also feeding so much that I felt like I wasn't producing enough you know to yeah. meet with his demands so I'll be so stressed and I feel so down and things like that but you know again you want to tell right? your mom it yeah lonely, it does right? yeah because you feel like you be in the room and you're like yeah tick, tick, tick. <laughs> Exactly. So it's it's 
it's like uh, the baby's crying. You know, the baby's hungry, but you know, somehow you're just not. Just you know, happy. yeah. Yeah, so we want to tell moms out there to just, you know, be kind to yourself. It doesn't make you a bad mom, even if you are unable to breastfeed, you know. At the yeah, end and of listen day, to your long... bodies. This is nothing yes. I like to learn, babe. Always listen to your body. Um, mm -hmm. Whether it's when you're pregnant or, you know, when you're breastfeeding, you know, for example, if you yeah. feel, you know, something's off, you know, just listen to that mom intuition. I think it's even stronger. You know, once mm -hmm. you become pregnant, that little voice inside you, it's never, yeah. never wrong. Yeah. Mm -hmm. True that. We just want to take a quick moment to congratulate Cheryl. She's currently 38 weeks pregnant oh, and she's looking pregnancy. forward to an, yeah, to an exciting breastfeeding journey. So, yes, congratulations. And we wish you all the best as well. Yeah. Um, Carrie says breastfeeding... Question. Is beautiful, yes. Tough but rewarding. Tough yes, Gary, is absolutely agree. correct. Yes. Agree. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we can share just based on our experience that even though it was a smooth sailing journey for us, and even now that I'm breastfeeding Mila, I mean, so far so good. But you it is are, tough. Right? It takes, yeah, yeah I, I still am. It takes a lot of you, right? It's like, because it's that role that only and you you're can doing do. You're doing back to back, right? With two babies within like two years so that's crazy like they forever you like your boobs are, are not yours anymore for the past two years I, how, do you, I know. how do you manage that um i don't know i just don't think about it too much i suppose um yeah <laughs> it's just i'm i always just tell myself that this is all temporary and you know there's a time for everything so yeah. right now my role is to be a mom and to provide you know um, to make sure my babies are healthy. And there will come, a, like, I try to focus on me once in a while as well. Just, you know, do, find pockets of time that, to do things that make you happy. That's you know? Because, right. um, like, yeah, breastfeed, when you're a breastfeeding, fully breastfeeding mom, it's really 24-7, I want to say, because even at night, they wake up so often just to breastfeed, right? Yeah. I think we have some questions. Let's see. <laughs> How do you know when to wean and also how to start weaning? Ah, okay. maybe you want to share that. You want to go ahead, Anu? What was it? How do you how, know how do you, when? When to, when you, when to wean, your, wean off your baby and, and how did you do it with Darian? Okay. okay, based on my personal experience with Darian, um, I started, uh, I, okay, so that was my goal after a year. And he was already taking his main three meals of the day well, yeah. very well. And, you know, he was mm -hmm. snacking in between and um, I felt, and also my production was low. You know, my body, the production okay. was not as much, um, definitely mm -hmm. after a year of breastfeeding. And um, yeah. I decided that, you know, I take on this journey. And also I found that he, he went to the booth more for comfort uh, than anything more else. Than to than feed. Just feed. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So there's mm -hmm. a difference between nourishment and comfort, yeah, ladies, just to, to get things uh, straight. So um, yeah. that's when I decided, like, hey, um, let's let's try this out. And yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I decided to do it at 13 months. And my weaning journey was actually pretty easy because I did it within three days, babe. I remember talking to you about it. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, we're, so, I, we're yeah. so thankful and we're so lucky that our babies oh. are not the kind that would just, like, yell and, you know... Yeah. Um, Exactly. so difficult to get off the boob yeah, yeah. So, and and, they, and he was already eating well so mm. you know main three meals a day in between snacks and, and on solids um, yeah so i felt it was the right time and our goal yeah. was 13 months and it was pretty mm -hmm. easy like the first two nights i slept in the guest room you know bj yeah. was with him in the room and yeah, I think they the just cannot night, smell you cannot see you correct. cannot smell you, <laughs> they cannot need to get over that yeah, and yeah. you need to talk to them because uh, Darian yeah. pretty much could, under could understand. I was like, yeah. you know, baby, you don't need the boobies anymore, you know. We can yeah. And he was already on the bottle. He was already taking um, the bottle well. So yeah. that's when I decided like 13 months would be the right time. And mm -hmm. I am so thankful that we went through it pretty easy. Thank God. <laughs> yeah, I know. What um, about you with Miles? And 
<laughs> with mouth. Well, I breastfed yeah. him for 14 months. And mm-hmm. the the reason why I stopped was, well, I got pregnant with my number two, <laughs> with Mila. So I was advised by the doctor to stop breastfeeding because I was getting cramps every time right. I breastfed while I was oh. pregnant. So so I decided to stop at 14 months. And I love how you said that to talk to your baby I mean, they may be one year old, six months, but I do feel like they understand, right? Yeah. So you just have to explain it to them and, you know, slowly but surely they will wean off. And I think a good sign, like you said, is as well when they're eating well throughout the day. Um, and I also want to just quickly mention this, that we all have goals as uh, breastfeeding moms as to how long we want to breastfeed for. It could be six months, it could be a year, it could be two years as recommended by WHO. But I yeah. feel like don't be too hard on yourself if you don't achieve that particular goal. Exactly. You know? Like, yeah, and um, this question bit, um, yeah. just coming to what you were saying, what would you say to someone who chose to formula feed? There's a stigma for mummies who chose not to breastfeed Not too. to breastfeed too. Yeah, I think... Good um, question breastfeeding doesn't mean anti-formula at all. You yeah. know, um, you choose um, how you want to feed your baby as long as your baby is fed. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I would yeah. say fed is best. No one's going to judge I know you. Every, like, yeah, you everyone mind. goes... Correct. Everyone says breast is best, but I would say fed is best because you never know the struggle that a mom exactly. is going through. You know, exactly. why they choose to not breastfeed is a personal choice, I feel. And I mean, we're all very well aware about mental health these days and, you know, postpartum blues, things like that. So you, you, it's easy for you to judge from the outside, like, oh, why are you breast, not breastfeeding your kid? Why are you giving your kid a like formula but you 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 don't know the true story you know everyone is battling their own demons so i feel like as moms let's not be judgy you know let's stick together come on right so so true yeah so you know we comfort each other and we as i think we should just lift each other in in times like you know like this especially when you know our kids drive us insane or we we're so consumed by mom guilt exactly. you know every day maybe the mom same but we real. feel <laughs> yes we feel very differently every single day yes, yeah and someone true. says Some moms can't produce too especially when they're working full-time that's something that mm-hmm. i understand especially if you're a corporate mom you have a yeah, say nine to five exactly. or even a nine to ten or you're working 16 to 18 hours days or you know on the job so, so true it's not easy i know yeah. mommy where she still pump in the bathroom at, at the office you know i know yes i've heard of that i i totally respect corporate moms who can do that but at the same time i understand the stress that you would have to go yeah. through and breastfeeding is very very much connected to your mental state if you were stressed definitely. you were definitely not going to produce um as much milk as you'd want to so like like you know we're just going back to what we said babe you know uh fat is best yeah. mm-hmm. that is best and someone also mentioned um traveling and breastfeeding is hard so so true i haven't gotten that figured out just yet when yeah. i was breastfeeding I don't think I traveled without Miles. Right. Yeah. And even now yeah. with Mila, I don't travel without her because I don't know how to do it. I mean, I can be stocking up, but then you have all this worry about they are not taking the bottle well. And if I'm traveling, like, what do I do with the milk? Do I throw it away or how do I freak? It's just so Yeah, and then the times that you need to pump, is it, a, do I need to set yeah. an alarm to wake up at two or three in the morning? You know, the pump mm-hmm. becomes your best friend after a while, ladies, if you're choosing to breastfeed. But babe, just yeah. going back to, to, you know, I remember you were working when you were fully breastfeeding mouths and you'd wake yeah. up like super early in the morning and do super long hours on your TV show, show right? Mm-hmm. So how was that yeah. for you? Um, I just had to sort of get into a routine. I, I, because I've also heard, I mean, I did ask some of my other mom friends as well, how they would do it. The, the working moms, especially the ones that are working full time, they would set a schedule, their pumping schedules, 
like every single day. So they know exactly when they will need to pump and store the milk and, and all that. And, um, and it's quite amazing to see how some offices are really, that they really support breastfeeding moms, that they would give you some time off to go pump your milk. Oh, and right. and I've, I've even seen, I've stepped into an office where they even had a pantry with a designated fridge for you to store your milk. So, oh, I mean, that's so right. so good and so nice. And I think more and more companies and offices should do that to support breastfeeding moms. Definitely, so definitely. that, yeah, so that was what I, I would do. I would, it would be, because I was working when Miles was about two months old then. Um, so I would sort of schedule my timing. I would pump before I go to work. Right before the show, I would pump. Right after the show, I would pump as well. And then I'll come home and then I'll latch throughout the day. Because... Um, Don't <laughs> tell you. <laughs> thank you. But yeah, because I feel like <laughs> latching does uh, help with the production as well. Definitely. But did you, do, did you do anything else to sort of um, keep your production going? Like, you know? So I think the peak of of um, my milk production was somewhere at five to nine months, and after nine mm -hmm. months, it dropped significantly. Yeah. Um, so what I used to do was make sure I just stayed hydrated a lot, uh, drank yeah. a lot of water, and mm -hmm. just eating my three main meals a day on time, and mm -hmm. um, making sure that my meals were packed with the right nutrition. Um, okay. Eat your leafy greens, eat your fish, eat your chicken, you know, eat your, your veggies. Yes, your veggies. Your oats. <laughs> oats, yes, your oats. Oh, lactation yeah. cookies do help. Do help. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, uh. Did you take <laughs> any lactation cookies? I did, I did. Which ones uh, did you take? Maybe you could recommend. One. The lacto -mama. Lacto -mama. Yeah. I think you I took was them on... too, right? Yeah, you took them too, right, babe? Yep. I, I was on Lacto Mama as well, and right now I'm also on this brand called Nedia. That was, that's Nedia. pretty yummy. Okay. Yeah, N E D Y A. Yeah, that's pretty yummy too. So, yeah, and because I saw a comment as well. Yeah, when you're breastfeeding, you are hungry all the time. Bye, Carrie. <laughs> so, yeah, right? Because you're hungry all the time yes, when you're breastfeeding because you're losing so much calories. And yeah, exactly. And energy and, you mm -hmm. know, it's also important that you stay hydrated and eat and eat. Don't be worried about losing your, your mummy weight. You know, you get yeah. that. You know, for <laughs> now, if you're breastfeeding, your main priority is to feed yeah. your baby. Yeah, don't be mm -hmm. pressured into society norms to lose weight and just bounce back, you know, to... Yeah. Your, to, your, to your, your usual figure. I think that's so important mm -hmm. when we say that to mummies out there, babe. You know, yeah. like, they're so pressured nowadays, these modern moms. Like, how did she bounce back? Like, I know, right? When you see all the fit mamas, you're like, woo. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, in order to keep your supply up, um, for those of you who, has joined, who have just joined us, so hydrate, eat a balanced meal, um, lactation cookies help. But ultimately, it is, like we said earlier as well, right? I know it's your mental state. It's so true, babe. Yeah, it is your yeah. mental state. Um, you know, postpartum mm -hmm. blues are real. Um, I think yeah. your spouse support is important. Ask for help mm -hmm. when you need to um, yeah. at home. I think there's a question there, babe. Uh, by yes, Sylvia. there is. Um, Sylvia, yes. Currently yeah. six weeks postpartum. Baby was only shallow latching and it started to be torturous after two weeks. So I decided to be an EP mom. Uh, but my production does not meet baby's demand despite pumping eight times. Any tips to increase supply? Sorry, what does EP mean, babe? Ex I think it's express, is it? Oh, is it? Okay. Express, like you sorry, express. Just throw some light to us, yeah. As in EP, but um, anyway, you were just asking any tips to increase supply. Yeah. Um, I think when you're pumping if that's what we're assuming mm -hmm. you are doing now it's like you're just fully pumping on 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 the um pump for for milk yeah. your your state of mind is so important um yeah you need to go somewhere find your spot you know like mm -hmm. i used I, I remember i used to sit in the hall sit down with a cup of oh exclusive pumping thank you someone <laughs> pumping. right thank you okay yeah so, so we're right 
it's your state of mind when you pump. You need to be totally relaxed. For me, I used yeah. to do breathing exercises. I used to have a cup of Milo, any comfort, you know, a drink, and uh, just go to one corner, relax. And I do have some mantras that I used to use, baby mantras, or saying, you know, I'm here. You know, I trust my body will give me the right nourishment to to help my baby grow. Things like that mm-hmm. that I would, you know, say aff- affirmations, babe. Um, mm-hmm. I I uh, love that. It yeah, may well, sound so yeah. It may sound so fluffed, but it's actually really, really true what you're saying. Yeah, and I could, really, I can totally, yeah, I can totally relate to that because I realize the difference as well when I am pumping right. and when I'm on my, I'm on my phone. If I'm on my phone, I feel like the focus is not there, and yes. I tend to not produce so much. But if right. I'm just sitting down and just closing my eyes and trying to relax, just breathe and stuff, then it does make a difference. So I hope. Because you're fully uh, that, present, right? You're fully present with your body, the workings yeah. of your body, and um, the mind ultimately is mm-hmm. is connected to to the movements of your body, and your your breast milk production is ultimately your blood. So yeah, um, yeah, it's it's so important. And the, mm-hmm, and the mind is so so powerful, and we yes, really hope that condition the mind, psych the mind. <laughs> yeah, we hope that that will help you, Sylvia, to increase yeah, your your milk supply. Yes. And okay, I think we have another question. Does milk supply decrease as baby eats more solids? Well, um, I would say yes, in a way, when your baby eats more solids, because then you will be latching less. But ultimately, I think your production would sort of match the baby's demand. That's so true. If right? Yeah. And um, leave it to nature to, and your yeah. baby's growth. You know, leave it to your baby uh, to decide. Mm-hmm. I mean, as and when they grow, if they're taking more solids, I yeah. feel that, that like, for example, for me, my breast milk production definitely uh, reduced. Um, yeah. But as baby grows, and because mm-hmm. your connection with your baby is strong, and um, mm-hmm. just that that mother-baby connection will follow even the, your, the growth of your body or the movings of your body will, will be in line with the, with the growth of your child. So That's true. Yeah, so, and as, and I mean, and there's always like this thing where, okay, if your baby's eating solid, do you still breastfeed your baby? The answer is also yes. Yes, um, yes. when they're under one, your milk is still sort of the, the main source for yes. food. So eating, is, eating solids is just like a, like a fun experiment, you know, for them to taste different textures and, and food. Um, so yeah, still, I mean, when your baby's hungry, if they want the, the boob, just give just it to them. Yeah, especially at night, you know, they sleep through the night. It's not like they're going to eat solids once they go, once everybody's gone to bed, right? So that's mm-hmm. when they would naturally ask for the boob because it's still needed by yeah. the body um, for Definitely. growth. Yeah. Okay, and we have another question from Clarissa. How do you mm-hmm. find time to exercise when you are breastfeeding mommy? I find it difficult as the yeah, latching time is not consistent. Um, for me, Clarissa, uh, in well, I didn't work out or do any form of exercise until I think when Miles was, I want to say four or five months. Right. Because it is true. In the beginning... It's really pretty much just, you know, as and when, you know, when the baby wants to latch, you latch, you know, that kind of thing. So with Miles at that time, it was also um, every two hours and then sometimes it would be like every hour. So I, I found it difficult to find time to exercise as well. But the good news is the latching time does somehow get consistent after a while. Yeah there will be sort of like a pattern as they grow. Um, and I hope that, I, I don't know how old your baby is right now, but um, after a while, there will be some somewhat of a pattern. And then, then perhaps you could find those pockets of time to go do like a home workout or, or things like that. You know, if going to the gym takes up too much time. What about you, Anu? Did you have trouble exercising? Yeah, it was. I think it was the same for me as well. You know, initially, um, I think right about until probably about three months. Um, it, especially when the firstborn baby is always cluster feeding. That's the toughest. 
You're literally yeah. like a sedentary cow in bed, <laughs> just breastfeeding <laughs> all the time. Yeah. Yes, as Megan said, it will get better. Latching will become more consistent. Find mm-hmm. a routine. Um, I always, always live by that. Find a routine eventually. But I think the first three months, it's it's so, so crucial that you go with um, your baby's demands. And thereafter, yes. hopefully, you, know, you can gauge the time to latch and mm-hmm. to unlatch. You know, um, yeah. Go about you know find 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 your find your your schedule. But for me, um, I used to do a lot of breathing exercises in between um, uh-huh. little movements. But I had a C section, so I only started uh, vigorous exercise um, after about six months after my doctor mm-hmm. gave me the green light. So go back to your doctor right. if you've had C section. Um, yeah. Other than that, you know, it does get better, ladies. It does get better. So <laughs> yes, we promise you, mommy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yes. You'll be I so mean, proud let's... of it later. <laughs> Don't have to be in such a rush to, like we said earlier as well. You know, yeah. to get your body back and you know that pressure to exercise and things like that. Um, you just do you. You know, like after a while, your baby will will get the rhythm of things and so will you. So yes, it does get better. And also the question that I do get a lot as well. um, Can you drink coffee when you're breastfeeding? Okay, Megs, you have to answer that because I don't drink coffee. Yeah, I know. I I don't know how you do it. How do you survive day to day without drinking coffee? But um, uh, chocolate. Yeah, (laughs) Milo is what I'm drinking right now. Oh, nice. nice. (laughs) What are you drinking? Honey, lemon, uh-huh. and turmeric, babe. Wow, that sounds so yummy and healthy. Yum, yum, yum. That's um, my drink. See, no coffee, so that's what I have. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, about the the whole coffee thing. Um, again, we're mm-hmm. just sharing our experiences, and we're not doctors or experts. Um, and you should really do what you're comfortable with. At the end of the day, you know, if you feel like it's gonna you know you don't, you're not comfortable with the idea then don't do it but as for me I was um, I was working as you all know when Miles was two months so I had to have my coffee every day <laughs> and it's even fun. now like you still yeah coffee. so yeah so I did ask my doctor that question actually mm-hmm. and he said to me yeah one cup is fine it's right. like one okay once a day that's that's absolutely okay right i think we have a question yeah. there by cheryl Peng. Mm-hmm. um i'm 38 weeks and doctor was saying that baby hasn't engaged gyne was saying that might need a c-section if the chances of natural birth is low um mm-hmm. okay wait but cheryl what was your question are you worried um yeah that you would not have a natural birth is that what i'm i'm guessing um, if you could just give a shed us some light. Yeah. Because yeah, I think we, we both have very different birthing experiences yeah. as well, right? Because I did yeah. a natural birth and... Um, I had I knew, a C-section. Yeah, and you were also... You wanted a natural birth as well, right? But yes. But it didn't yes. happen. So I always um, visualize that I would have a natural birth. Um, you know, I do a lot of yoga. I do a lot of breathing exercises. Um you know, it was, I, I did a lot of self-affirmations, but mm-hmm. it just did not happen. And Darren came yeah. out earlier at 36 weeks. So yeah. um, I remember uh, my my um, water broke at night, midnight, and I went to the hospital and it was already 10 in the morning. From midnight to 10 in the morning, doctor was telling me, you're only 1 cm dilated, Anuja. You know, mm-hmm. um, just to share my birth experience. I, of course, yeah. you know, my heart dropped. I felt so sad, like, oh my God, why isn't he engaging? Why isn't he dilated? Um, yeah. But then I told myself, at, then and there, as lo- I, all I could take care of was, is the baby's heartbeat okay? Is the baby's heartbeat okay? And I just was looking out. Um, for Darian, for my baby to be okay. I didn't care whether I had to go through a C-section or that flew out of my mind, you know, yeah. as long as the baby is okay. You yeah. know, um, that's when your motherhood instinct kicks in. And I yeah. I had a C-section, um, but once your baby is in your arms, you know, that everything else flies out the window and you're like, yeah, I did this. So, right. 
So yeah, mummies, don't worry. Even if you can't have a natural birth, um, mm-hmm. or even if it goes to a C-section, I was there. I feel you. But as long as the baby's healthy, that's all yeah. that you. That's true. That's very, very true. And I think I remember sharing this as well. I mean, it's good to have some somewhat of a birth plan, you know, to sort of know what, what kind of birth you want. Yes. But at the end of the day, if it doesn't go the way you plan, that's okay too, as long as yes. the baby is safe. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So if you guys have any other questions for us, please leave us a comment. I hope we didn't miss any I know, questions. I know, I'm just scrolling so. up to see if we miss any <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, for those of you who have just joined us, we are talking about breastfeeding because um, Anu and myself, we have fully breastfed our kids. Um, well, I am still breastfeeding. I feel like I've been yeah, breastfeeding you're still for two breastfeeding years. Breastfeading champion, or mama. More. Like, <laughs> so yeah, because my baby is now five months old. Um, oh my god, I and... thought she was, she was so much bigger. She looks so much bigger, really? Mila. Cute, like a really ball. compared to Miles, Miles was a massive, Babe, was a Mila huge was baby. You mean she Mila's... came out big. She came out bigger, but she is. Um, I think her growth rate now is slower than Miles. Right, Maybe because okay. she's a girl. I don't know. She's yeah. more petite. Um, but yeah, so I am still fully breastfeeding Mila right now, and um, and and I think I can share this as well about um, you know, a lot of moms ask as well, like. Do I pump or do I not pump? When would be the right time for mm-hmm. me to start pumping? When did you start um, expressing your milk? Oh, wow. <laughs> now that you ask me, I really can't remember. I think it was, was it four months, five months? Because mm-hmm. I was most of the time at home and I had the luxury to just get him to fully latch on. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think it was at four or five months. I said like my, my the peak of my milk production I remember was at five to somewhere five to nine, and then thereafter after five I think five months babe I think and then I yeah. started pumping more to to increase the supply. So so mummies, the more you pump, uh, the mm-hmm. more milk you get. Is that would yeah you, true because it sends your right? your body a me- yeah because it sends a, your body a message right like you need more you need to produce more because you know that um yeah. So you pump more and you latch more, so your body sort of just gets the signal that you yeah, need more milk. We have another milk. question there by uh, yes. Alicia Charlene. How long does mm-hmm. breast milk in the fridge? I can't remember this one. <laughs> Do you? <laughs> okay, let me take this question then. <laughs> well, um, I hope I'm not wrong. So you know, you don't go Google it and then um, then and like take a piss at me <laughs> or something. <laughs> But I usually, uh, when I express my milk, I put it in the fridge. It should last a few days, but I don't really let it go more than two days. Right. I mean, just for a peace of mind. Um, yeah, so it should last about two to three days, I want to say. Right, okay. Yeah. But when you freeze it, it's longer, right? Months. Yeah, when you freeze it, it's longer. It could last for months, depending on the type of freezer you have, okay. deep, whether you're deep freezing it or you're just using the freezer in the fridge but personally i don't let my frozen milk go for more than a month yeah same i didn't because um because i always feel like you know they they feed on demand right and whatever milk that you produce like the nutrients in a way match their age exactly. yes, yes yeah exactly. so i don't want to store it for too long like to, you know yeah. store it for yeah and then and then give it to them but i know that some moms have no choice because you know, yeah. you have to travel for work or, you know, you you can't be with your baby all the time. So that's absolutely fine. But I mean, that's just, I mean, personally, that's what I would do. Yeah. If I keep it in the fridge, I just leave it for about maybe two days, three days tops. And then in the freezer, not more than a month. So, Wait, yeah. Someone... You want to take that one, babe, Chloe? Which one? Oh. Chloe. Yeah, how if baby doesn't want to direct the latch? Oh, um, because as we were sharing earlier, Anuja and I had a pretty smooth sailing breastfeeding journey, um, so we never really had problems latching, um, because our babies latched quite easily. I want to say, yeah, yeah, yeah Anu, so well, I have heard of other moms though who would like, um. Sylvia earlier, I think, when she said that she was exclusively pumping. 
So yeah, maybe that's something that you could do. You could try to get baby to latch, but if you know if if you tried your best and you can't, um, maybe you'd want to try pumping and then feeding feeding baby with a bottle. That that could work. Yeah. But um, I'm so sorry that we are unable to. I don't know. Anu, have you heard of any stories from moms, other moms, perhaps oh. who? Who I don't know. Try. I thought I'd, I'd to like let this baby. How how old is your baby now, Chloe? Um, yeah, that that's what I wanted to know before I could actually get to answering your question. I don't know if it's a newborn baby or if it's yeah. You know, maybe you want to want mm-hmm. want to let us know by then. How old's your baby, Chloe? And yeah. uh, another one by Cheryl. Thanks for the motivation. Trying to be very positive during this COVID nineteen season. Hospital rules are changing and Herbie might not mm-hmm. be able to enter labor. Enter okay, labor. Um, just to let you know, my husband was not allowed to enter the operation theater with me. Um, but then again, I had a C-section. So I don't know, babe, was um, John able to enter the room with you while you were in labor? Yeah, he was able to um, because I had a natural birth. And so he was with me every step of the way, right. okay. um, which was very comforting. Um, but yeah, I know. I I've heard of that too. Like a a personal friend as well, who might might not might not be able to have her husband in with her because of the whole COVID situation. So, let's just hope and pray for the best that this will somehow blow over soon. Or, yeah, things will be in better control, and that your husband will be able to be there with you. So we're wishing you the very best, Cheryl. Yes. Yes, and even if you know it really comes to that that he really can't yeah. be with you, just tell yourself yeah. that you know um, you were given this baby, and um, mm-hmm. you know uh, the universe trusts you to to bring the baby out into the world. Oh, okay. So Chloe has answered um, earlier. Her baby is now six months. He has stopped latching since three months old. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. And what was it? Because if it again? because um. Like, what if the baby doesn't want to latch? Well, someone gave a suggestion that if baby doesn't want to latch, you can seek help from lactation consultant. And I think that's a really good tip as well because they Always would go back to definitely, the expert. yeah, the expert. They definitely will be able to guide you the right way to to latch your baby or how to bring baby to your boob. Because even for me, um, initially I was doing it all wrong. Right, and I had a really good lactation consultant as well, who was just guiding me all the um, for the first few days. So, but now that her baby is six months and has stopped latching since he was three months, um, yeah, perhaps you could seek help from the expert, or if I not, I think there's then... a Facebook uh, group, right, babe, that has yeah. a, a feeding support group. I mean, I wasn't part of it. I don't know, but w- I've heard of it before um, mm-hmm. from my other friends. I don't know if you want to check that out. But yeah, or just, just reach out to a lactation consultant um, mm-hmm. to see how they can help you. The experts are the best. Okay, and we have more questions. Um, is freezing encouraged for your breast milk? I, I don't know if it's encouraged, but um, you know, us moms, we got to have a life as well. And we need the extra supply when we're not... <laughs> Please. available or oh, we just want to step out of the house for a while get a breather, yes you know so mm-hmm. and um yeah so i'd say why not freeze yes i'd say that too that's what we all did <laughs> i know we both did that i think our babies turned out fine so <laughs> yeah, so okay. we could go out and have our, 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 our girlfriend nights uh post postpartum right babe yeah, I know. That's why it's yeah. so important to also focus on yourself at a time like this. Um, how to defreeze it apart from the normal stuff? And what is the father's role while mom is breastfeeding? Anything the father should be aware of? Ooh, this is an interesting mm-hmm. question. Well, okay, let's um, break it down. How to defreeze it? Um, do you remember? <laughs> Well, um, I remember Vijay helping me get the bottle of milk, mixing the milk, bring it, bring it up to me. Or when there are days that I was down, you know, just talking mm-hmm. to me so that I could just let it all out. And, you know, yeah. just, just being there to support me um, mm-hmm. mentally, just, just, just talking it out. 
Um, yeah. Or he would even when he when he was on the bottle when Darian was on the bottle he would take over feed sessions and feed him with the bottle. Mm-hmm. So those are yeah, the and I think I remember that was being done when I you know when I was breastfeeding. Yeah, correct, and that allows um like the dad to also bond with the baby. Yeah. When they give them the bottle, but when you're physically latching and breastfeeding, um sometimes it's nice to just have like your partner be present. Yeah. Right? Exactly. I mean, they don't even have to really say anything, yeah, but just, just lie down being, you and yeah, be just there. being there is quite comforting. It's comforting. And to answer your que- yeah, to answer your question about how to defreeze it, uh, what I do normally is that I roughly know when I would need to use the milk, so I would take it out from the freezer and thaw it in in the fridge, and that lasts for about twenty four hours. Yeah, so see, when you did need, that, did that yeah, so you just take it out and then. And then just warm it up, and yeah, and you're you're good to go. If it doesn't defreeze um, in time, then um, you can just run it, run it with water in the bag, and then yeah, and then just heat it up. Then you're most welcome for answering the question. Oh, and then the suggestions for the FB group is called the B, the Breastfeeding Advocates Network. Yes, T-Bot. correct. Yeah. Letting it thaw in the fridge. Breastfeeding and feeding baby every two hours feels like the days and nights are blurred. When did you start developmental activities with baby? How to play with baby at this stage, two to three months old? Yeah, babe, since Mila's around, that you might not <laughs> <laughs> To be honest, I have, I, I don't, um... If you're talking about like classes and stuff, I haven't sent Mila for any of the, you know, activity or classes just yet. In fact, with Miles, I only started him at one and a half years old anyways. So I think just play with the baby however you like to play with your baby, you know. They're just happy just seeing your face anyways and you being there. So, um, and I like to talk to the baby. Peekaboo is always fun. <laughs> and I think yeah, because at yeah, sorry, you were saying yeah. something. Yeah, no, go ahead, go ahead. No, I want to say that especially at two to three months old, I think mm-hmm. um, baby needs to be closer to mommy than anything else because the mother strong, but the mother baby bond is is so much more stronger than. Um, so I think just being there with your baby, cooing, having eye contact, yeah. you know, putting them on mm-hmm. your knee, facing you, and just talking to them, and you know, all they want yeah. to do is. See your smiley face and smell you and just be next to you, you know, mm-hmm. um, encouraging them to maybe just like turn over or just like, you know, playing with their hands, yeah. playing with the pill, yeah. you know, their feet. That helps. True. Um, they, because, so, yeah, because yeah, babies find a lot of comfort, you know, with your moms, of course. Yeah. Um, especially if, if you're breastfeeding them or not, they find a lot of comfort just being with you. And I think just don't stress too much about like, you know, oh, uh, my baby's supposed to, you know, do this now at this stage, you know, all the milestones and stuff. Yeah. I think probably that is another I, topic that yeah, I'd love to touch on as well. Yeah, all together. Stress. Exactly. Yeah. About milestones. I think it's, and it's scary how competitive some people are sometimes about milestones. Mm, and I think true. you just have to just focus on you and your baby and just, you know, do what makes you happy and just be in the moment with your with your kid and always remember every child is different mhm that's right yeah okay <laughs> this is so funny i find it most annoying when i'm latching the baby with all the time my husband <laughs> snoring next to me oh my god i know I your feel hormones you. are raging at this point in yeah. time it can yeah you your spouses can evade you to to an extent but they need to sleep too you know <laughs> Yeah, exactly. That's so, so funny. you know, we have to be kind not to ourselves but also to each other. Yes, that's true. That's yeah. true. Or if you really cannot tahan, then maybe you can just like tendang. Sipa, <laughs> sipa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just okay. to get him to stop a little bit. We've got about like less than five minutes left. So if okay. there are no more questions, we're going to slowly wrap things up. And yes, we mentioned earlier that we are doing um, a giveaway for this session. Yes. And, you know, to encourage uh, those of you who are breastfeeding, um, 
are on this breastfeeding journey or if you're about to start your breastfeeding journey, I know you will also need your me time. So you definitely need to pump your milk and things like that. And so today we are going to be giving away... Are you ready for it? <laughs> yes, it's so true. This is what we're giving away. It is a UVC LED sterilization mommy bag. And this wow. is something that I use as well when yeah, like um, I I'm... Put sterilization bag. <laughs> I know. This is so cool because it's, it's wow. really new in the market. It's by 59S. And this is, of course, courtesy of uh, Mother Care Malaysia. Right. So this is what I use as well when I need to go out or when I need to go to work. And then when I pump my milk. It's so cute. Um, yeah, so see, it's, it's oh, a you bag. Got a pink one for Mila. <laughs> and it comes with a handle as well. This is, of course, mine, but we'll give you a brand new one. Um, so on the top compartment, you will be able to store your, your bottles and your pump. And you can also sterilize it as well, which is the cool part. How does because, that work? Yeah, so you see, it comes, it comes with a battery pack that you can connect at the back to a wire. And then, see, you just connect it. And with a push of a button over here, just press on this. And in three minutes, your pump and your bottles will be sterilized. Wow. I know, technology, so right? So much you, so much <laughs> Yeah, and then of course, at the bottom, that is fully insulated as well. So that's where you can put an ice pack and then keep your milk, store your milk until you get to a fridge and put your okay. milk in. So, yes, the question we are giving, is, yes, one, we are giving I, away two, this bag. Mm -hmm. One. Are you giving away one? Yes, I am giving away just one. Sorry, and I only have one to give away. And who's going to be the lucky mommy to win it? <laughs> yeah, so I will be posting the questions um, on Anuja's poster the latest post on mix mesh earlier okay. that i posted today so we're going to be updating the caption we're posting the questions there and you can answer them in the comment section and you know what i'm gonna let anu pick a winner so oh. <laughs> pressure's on you okay Yes. Please so... don't hit me mommies don't don't hit me okay <laughs> <laughs> so i want to thank anu so much for joining this session with me and i also want to thank all of you guys for tuning in and thank you so much for all of your questions, questions. um okay we have less than two minutes but basically twin babies for breastfeeding wow <laughs> um i don't have experience in that area so Sorry, unfortunately i won't be i'm a twin i probably need to ask my mom to get back to you but yeah dm anu dm <laughs> anu and then she will go ask her mom and then she'll she'll get back to you okay so uh, we're gonna wrap up today's episode of mommy time thank you so much anu for joining me and thank you guys for watching it was such a fun session Thank you, thank you. We'll be back tomorrow with another mummy and we will reveal who that mummy is um, tomorrow morning. So yeah, thanks Anu and thanks guys for watching. Much love to all of you. Remember, thanks, be kind to yourself. Be kind to yourself. Yes, mummies. Love Good yourself. night, everybody. Bye -bye. Good night. Stay safe. Good Stay night. home. <laughs>